That's who works with them, Denver Post. Yeah, it's a surprise to you? Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, Michael, yeah, sure. when... When, uh, when Jamal went down, um, it, it would almost be ridiculous to ask Nicola to do more. But did you have a conversation with him about welcoming more responsibility, accepting more burden, and kind of recognizing if you guys are going to go anywhere, it's going to be on his shoulders and how far he takes you? Yeah, it, to be honest, Mike, uh, I never had that conversation. Uh, I felt that Nicola has given his all all season, and that's why I think – uh, he's truly the MVP of this league because from game one all the way through game 72, he brought it every single night. Uh, and so I knew I didn't have to have that discussion with him, whether it's the six years we've had together, uh, knowing that uh, when guys go down, he understands the importance of him stepping up. But it was more important, the discussion with the other players and how we needed more from everybody else while Nicola maintained that MVP level. And to go 13 and five, you know, uh, with no Jamal Murray, which also included two days later, no Monte Morris, uh, a few games later, no Will Barton, PJ Dozier. Uh, when you add all that together, I think uh, how we finished the year was uh, was really remarkable. So proud of Nicola, yes, but also proud of everybody else that was uh, that performed at a high enough level that allowed us to be the three seed with everything that we had to deal with. Katie Wingy, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, with a couple of days of practice now, I'm just wondering, is there any update on Will Barton or P.J. Dozier? Have you seen them and working out with them? And then what is your hope for them, either in this series or beyond? Yeah, I think um, Will is definitely closer, Katie, uh, than P.J. Obviously, P.J.'s injury was uh, – they're all serious, but I think his was much more traumatic. Um, so he's definitely working hard, you know, uh, just having him around practice, seeing him, his positivity has been great. Um, but I think PJ is still a ways out. Uh, Will Barton, you know, was able to do parts of practice yesterday and today. Um, those soft tissue injuries are tough. And um, you know, that's what he's dealing with. But he's definitely inching closer. Um, I don't know if he'll be available or not come Saturday night. I'm hoping that maybe he'll be able to. But uh, we have to be smart with that. And I know it's that we all want him back. Um, but he's just not there at the moment, unfortunately. White Janes, NBC <clears throat> West. Oh, hey, Dwight, you're still uh, muted there. Well, last time you said you were doing it. But, uh, Mike, I'm sorry. Uh, what concerns you the most about defending them now? Uh, they've gone to a three guard lineup and all. How does that change them? Yeah, I, I think for me, Dwight, the, the thing that scares me the most is the three-point line. Um, you know, they take 42 a game. They were second or third in both makes and attempts. Uh, last game we played them, they hit for nine in the first quarter. Uh, they can break a game open. Uh, they have an elite offense, number two in offensive efficiency. They don't turn the ball over. Um, and you have a guy in Damian Lillard who takes ten and a half threes a game. Uh, eight of those are pull-up threes, and we know that his pull-up three-point range is just over half court. You know, so uh, your pickup points, your bigs being at the level, he understandably so attracts so much attention. Uh, I think C.J. McCollum is a, a terrific player. Uh, all of us here in Denver still remember his performance in game seven a few years ago. Uh, so they are one of the more talented and dangerous backcourts. And then to your point, you add a guy in Norman Powell, who also stretches the floor. He gets to the basket. He gets to the foul line. Those three guards put a tremendous amount of pressure on your defense, especially from the three-point line. So uh, that would probably be the number one concern is can we guard the three somehow, some way? And then to follow that up, I think the next concern is can we keep Yusuf Nurkic and Cantor off the glass? Uh, those guys are tremendous offensive rebounders. They're physical. They're strong. And uh, they are on the season one of the top offensive rebound teams in the league. So even when you play good defense, it's not over until you get that defensive rebound. <clears throat> Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Michael, Aaron's obviously been, been such a great fit for you guys since you got him at the deadline. What are <clears throat> your conversations uh, about like with him just in terms of what you're going to need from him defensively? 
in this series, just with, with Portland's guards and kind of going off what you were just saying with containing them? Yeah, it's um, – funny thing is, you know, we're talking about this. You know, last year we went to Western Conference Finals – and, you know, we had Jeremy Grant, and Jeremy was guarding the likes of Donovan Mitchell, uh, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. And so, obviously, getting Aaron Gordon was, you know, a great acquisition for us at the trade deadline. And we have been, as a team, really successful ever since that trade deadline. I think one of the better records in the NBA since March 25th. Um, but now you're playing a team that doesn't have that elite wing, you know, that that – wing that, you know, you're, you're so concerned about. Portland's got three elite guards that put up just uh, unbelievable numbers every single night. And as you've all seen, we've been using Aaron Gordon to guard those guards, whether it's Norman Powell, C.J. McCollum, or Damian Lillard. And, you know, that, that's going to be a hell of a challenge, not just for Aaron Gordon, but for all of our primitive players. Um, but I think he's really excited. He was excited when he, gained, uh, when he got here, Harrison, because he knew the type of team that we had the success that we've had in the past. He wanted to be a part of that. And now that the playoffs are here, you know, this is going to be a great opportunity for Aaron Gordon to prove himself on both ends. And, and I have no doubt that he will. Uh, he's working his butt off. And I think he's really excited, as is everybody on the team, to get this series going. Uh, having this week of preparation is like a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because you get a lot of time to prepare. Uh, you get some, some time mentally and physically to give your players some rest. But I also think there's a part of our guys, and I'm sure the Portland players, that, hey, man, let, let's, let's start this thing up. Let's start playing because uh, we have not had this kind of rest the whole season. Um, so you know, Saturday night can't come soon enough. Thank you. <clears throat> Kyle Fredrickson, the Denver Post. Hey, Michael, just wanted to follow up a little bit on Nurkic. Uh, watching film of him this year, what – makes him so effective and also I know 2017 was a long time ago but what do you remember just about the challenge of playing him and Jokic um, you know on the same team during their brief stint as teammates uh, Nicola mentioned that you know for it, at least as younger players it seemed like they just didn't play well together well the, for your first question you know Nurk is uh, he's really skilled uh, I think he's a great compliment to both Dame and CJ uh, they're one of the league leaders in, in pick and rolls per game and dribble handoffs per game. And they, those guys have great synergy on the court. He sets great screens. He rolls. And his ability to catch the ball in the pocket to finish, to make plays for others. Um, we talked about his ability to work the offensive glass. And now three head-to-head -head meetings this year, uh, Yusuf is averaging five offense rebounds a game against us. Um, so, yeah, he's skilled. He's big. He's physical. Um, he's a really good basketball player. Uh, going back to 2017, that seems like such a long time ago. And, you know, we tried to play them both together early on. Uh, didn't have the results that we necessarily wanted. And the reality is, I think, you know, uh, the trade has benefited Nurk. It's benefited us. And it worked out for everybody. Uh, Nurk had a chance to become their starting center and has been instrumental in all their success. And obviously we know that who our center is. He's the league MVP. And, uh, you know, we've done everything to build around Nicole Jokic, which has allowed us to be the team that we've been, you know, the last three, four years. So, um, yeah, it didn't go well, but, you know, I, I think Nurk is in a great place. And I think you can tell by our recent success the last few years that, you know, we've definitely gone in the right direction as well. All right, coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Mike Singer with the Denver Post. Hey, Michael, um, you mentioned the 13 and five record since Jamal went down. Where would you guys be without Faku, A, and B, how comfortable are you um, with the matchup of him going up against Dame, given that he's a rookie, but he's obviously not your typical rookie, given his experience? Yeah, I mean, Faku obviously has been playing at a really high level um, with the injuries to Jamal and Monte and Will and P.J., Moore was placed on his shoulders, starting role, playing heavy minutes. I think in that stretch, Mike, Faku really impacted the game on both ends, scoring and playmaking on offense, um, defense, loose balls, being into guys, being just a, a constant pest out there. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if we're 13 and five with, without Faku's play. You know, we were depleted in the backcourt. So you're playing a rookie in Faku, you're playing a 10-day player in Austin Rivers, 
you're playing a two-way player in Shaq Harrison. So uh, we needed all those guys to step up, and they did. Um, and then going in, yeah, this is his rookie season, his first playoffs. But the thing we all know about Faku, he's been in big games in the Olympics, in World Championships, in the Euro League. So the, I, I don't anticipate Faku having a deer and headlights look. I think he's going to be – I'm very comfortable in the setting. He knows that the uh, the playoffs are a different level, and I'm sure he's going to bring his game to a different level. Um, but it's not on Faku to guard Dame Lillard by himself. No one can guard Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum by themselves. It will truly require a team effort, and uh, all, all five guys on the floor are going to have to be locked in and be real disciplined within the game plan and the personnel. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Cody. Yep, thank you.